chickens. So a few weeks ago, I was in the hospital. I am fine now. There's nothing to worry about at this time, except for what I'm going to do with the hospital gown that they let me keep. I'll be using this dress pattern from McCall's. Um, I know that I'm making a mistake by committing to collar and sleeves now, but I'm going to make B with the collar and the sleeves in a short version, and I might have enough material. Uh, so let's just see how this goes. Here it is, in all its glory. So let's get started. The first thing I did was unfold everything, which was probably unnecessary. And then I started cutting into the pattern pieces with the oldest and dullest pair of scissors on the planet because I was just too lazy to go downstairs and find the good pair of scissors that I had lost. This is the first dress that I've ever made that had like a complete bodice on the top, and it's absolutely terrifying. So the entire time that I was doing this, I just figured, do what the pattern tells you to do, and if, if you don't understand it, do what you think it tells you to do. If you've never handled this pattern paper before, it is the thinnest, most flimsy rice paper in the entire world. People who are much better at this than I am will tell you to cut them out and then transfer the shape and then all of the pattern markings onto a sturdier material, but I say, I, who has time for that? Oh look, a cat! That's uh, our boy George. He just decides to come in and hang out. This room is new to him. He's not normally trusted because he likes to chew on wires. And here's where I keep assorted lengths of wire. Fun fact about George, my sister left him outside one time without telling me, and by the time I got home there was a thunderstorm, and he was completely drenched and yelling to be let back in, and ever after he's been completely terrified of thunderstorms. So this dress has a front cut on the center line, and then a side front, side back, and then a back that's split down the middle for room for a zipper, uh, as well as shoulder pieces, sleeves, collar, and a bodice that I had to cut out here. Which sounds like a lot because it is a lot. Um, I, all of this hospital gown did not afford me enough material for what I had planned on. So first I decided to play a little game of geometry and tried to figure out where all I could put these pieces. Now let me tell you, the only reason I didn't immediately run to my phone and call my mom is because I had just gotten off of work at midnight and this was probably like 3 in the morning so she would not have been awake but normally whenever I'm trying anything with sewing I'm just like oh my god call your mother I, I blame not being able to get in contact with my mother for her to talk me down but at this point I just decided to make the skirt much shorter in order to be able to fit all the pattern pieces onto the hospital gown and then in a bit of absolute lunacy I just decided to take the existing pattern piece off, shorten it, compare it to the material, and then start all over. So while I'm starting over, uh, let's talk about how my headscarf makes me look like Ula, the dancer from that Jabba the Hutt scene from Star Wars. I told Jeff I thought it was really funny how people were obsessed with her considering she was a slave and she was forced to dance for this absolute disgusting, like, creature. and. Then he told me that she was actually a, like, figure of empowerment for some people um, in the Star Wars fan fictions. And then I asked him why he'd been reading Star Wars fan fiction. And the only conclusion that I can come to is, e look, I'm starting over again. The only conclusion I could come to is either he's reading Star Wars fan fiction, which I guess more power to you, I just didn't know he was into that, um, or he's reading articles about Star Wars fan fiction. So here I decided to make them even shorter because I just don't have the room on this material. And then I just decided, heck it, we're going to cut it out. We're done. We're not figuring it out anymore. We're making it super short and I'll make up the material later. Sorry about my strong language there. I'm just residually frustrated from how dull these scissors were. If you are someone who has ever considered trying to make their own clothes, but you're terrified of cutting into material because you're afraid of making mistakes, what I have learned is that most of cutting it has a lot of forgiveness to it 
and any mistakes that you make, you can fix it during the sewing process. And here I just want you to see how very little material I had left over at the end of this. I was absolutely getting bare bones here, scraping the bottom of the barrel. Uh, that there on the floor, I cut off the sleeves and kept them intact because I figured that I'd be able to just use the sleeve material as it was and re-sew it onto the dress. <laughs> you sweet summer child. Anyway, here's a little gag that I put together. I hope at least some of you find it funny. Hello? Oh, how's that hospital gown holding up? To shreds, you say? I've got everything cut out. I'm going to have to supplement some of the material because it is just a hospital gown. I have got a sheet that I think is going to match nicely and I can add some material to the bottom for length. I can only really do so much more. I'm, I'm not using my sewing machine right now because Jeff's asleep. We'll see how it goes tomorrow. I hope that you enjoy humor because I forgot to turn my microphone on for this portion, so whatever I was saying here is lost to history. So I just have to make up what I think I was saying. Hey chickens, it's me. I'm sewing on a dress. I'm already real stressed out about it. Hey, do you like my headscarf? Because headscarves are coming back. Anyway, here's the bodice portion of it, which I had to cut a little bit bigger because I'm a bigger lady up top. And I'm going to have to figure out how to incorporate the changes I made so that I'm not making big old mistakes. Would you like to see me sewing on this dress a little bit? Okay, here, here it comes. comes. Bye! Bye. The first thing that the pattern told me to do was to sew the darts in the bodice. If you're like me, you've never done this before. If I had just had to follow the pattern, I think it would have been easier, but I had to cut the bodice a little bit bigger and then kind of extrapolate where the darts would extend to. Uh, if you don't know what a dart is, it's where you take like a flat piece of material and you just sew into it to make a round shape because no person is two-dimensional. In this case, you're making sort of a cone shape to accommodate the chest area. So even though it looks like I'm sewing with confidence and wild abandon, I actually wound up doing the darts wrong the first time and I just had to go back and fix it. Next up, I attached the pockets to the front portion of the skirt. That's right, this dress has pockets. What did you think this video was about? So I made these pockets like movie snack size. Like, you can take snacks into the movie theater with nobody suspecting a thing, which is honestly like all women's pocket goals. And then you'll notice here that I still can't find my good scissors, still using those old terrible ones. I don't even know why I have those. Uh, so yeah, then I do the second pocket, just whip that bad boy on. Uh, I don't know why I even bother using pens. At some point in this project, I'm going to give up on pens and it's going to trigger somebody, and I'm completely fine with that. Uh, next, you have to sew the front portion uh, to the bodice, and then sew front to side front, back to side back, and then all of it together. If it sounds like I'm not a very good tutor, it's because this isn't a tutorial. Other people who have more time and are more talented would caution you to make a mock-up of your garment if you're doing something you've never done before. I did not do that. I did not have time. Um, they will also tell you to pin it and then try it on before you actually sew it. I also didn't do that, okay? I'm reckless. Instead, what I'm going to do is put in a zipper for the first time in my life, and the instructions tell you, step one, attach your zipper foot to your machine. Well, I don't have one of those. Uh, I did the zipper, and then afterwards I called my mom, and I was like, Mom, I put on a zipper. I don't even have a zipper foot. And she was like, you don't need a zipper foot to put a zipper on a machine. There have been zippers longer than there have been zipper foots. Therefore, just do it the way your grandma would have done it. If I know my grandma, she would have made this dress while waiting for her sauerkraut to ferment. Tell you what, this ain't your grandma's dress. But seriously, I'm going to add more material to the skirt. I just have to figure out where I'm going to get it from.